almost everything we think we know about addiction is wrong. The idea of addiction we've all got in our heads, that story, comes partly from a series of experiments that were done earlier in the 20th century. You get a rat and you put it in a cage and you give it two water bottles. One is just water and the other is water laced with either heroin or cocaine. The rat will almost always prefer the drugged water and almost always kill itself quite quickly. In the 70s, Bruce Alexander, professor of psychology in Vancouver, comes along and he looks at this experiment and he noticed something. He said, ah, we're putting the rat in an empty cage. It's got nothing to do except use these drugs. Let's try something a bit different. So Professor Alexander built a cage that he called Rat Park, which is basically heaven for rats, right? They've got loads of cheese, they've got loads of colored balls, they've got loads of tunnels. Crucially, they've got loads of friends, they can have loads of sex, and they've got both the water bottles, the normal water and the drugged water. But here's the fascinating thing. In Rat Park, they don't like the drugged water. They almost never use it, none of them ever use it compulsively, None of them ever overdose. You go from almost 100% overdose when they're isolated to 0% overdose when they have happy and connected lives. What if addiction isn't about your chemical hooks? What if addiction is about your cage? What if addiction is an adaptation to your environment? This has really significant implications. The most obvious implications are for the war on drugs, right? We punish addicts, we shame them, we give them criminal records, we put barriers between them reconnecting. Now, There's a place that decided to do the exact opposite, and I went there to see how it worked. In the year 2000, Portugal had one of the worst drug problems in Europe. So one day, the prime minister and the leader of the opposition got together, set up a panel of scientists and doctors to figure out what would genuinely solve the problem. And they came back and they said, decriminalize all drugs, from cannabis to crack. But, and this is the crucial next step, take all the money we used to spend on cutting addicts off, on disconnecting them, and spend it instead on reconnecting them with the society. But the biggest thing they did was the complete opposite of what we do. A massive program of job creation for addicts and micro-loans for addicts to set up small businesses. And when I went and met the addicts in Portugal, it's fascinating, what they said is, as they rediscovered purpose, they rediscovered bonds and relationships with the wider society, and the results are in. Injecting drug use is down in Portugal, according to the British Journal of Criminology, by 50%. Overdose is massively down, HIV is massively down among addicts, uh, addiction in every study is significantly down. We talk all the time in addiction about individual recovery, and it's right to talk about that. But we need to talk much more about social recovery. We created a society where, for a lot of us, life looks a whole lot more like that isolated cage and a whole lot less like Rat Park. What I try to do now, and I can't tell you I do it consistently and I can't tell you it's easy, is to say to the addicts in my life that I want to deepen the connection with them, to say to them, I love you, whether you're using or you're not, and if you need me, I'll come and sit with you, because I love you and I don't want you to be alone or to feel alone. And I think the core of that message, you're not alone, we love you, has to be at every level of how we respond to addicts, socially, politically and individually. Because the opposite of addiction is not sobriety. The opposite of addiction is connection.